Winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. That's this week's Playing the Ball column with NBR columnist Martin Devlin. Martin, thanks for coming by. Hamish, thank you so much for inviting me in. So this is about the uh, Football World Cup qualifier last week, the disappointment for New Zealand football. Tell us what you're talking about this week. Look, it's about both of the qualifiers, both Australia playing Peru and the All Whites playing Costa Rica. And I'd actually like to add to it as well, even though I didn't put it in the column because it was filed before the result, uh, the Crusaders beating the Blues. Um, Let's just touch on that for just, Mm. uh, you know, to start with. 15 in a row for the Blues, um, arguably the best team in the comp this year. Certainly the team that that was capturing all the headlines and the imagination, and for good reason, because they played such great rugby. Mm. And, you know, they're scoring spectacular tries. Uh, Crusaders flying a little bit under the radar, if that's possible for a team that's won 12 titles and five in a row. Started pretty slowly this year, didn't they? Yeah, and and didn't play their best rugby until the first 20 or 30 minutes of that final at Eden Park on Saturday. And my point being that, you know, the Blues will be licking their wounds over the next few days and and weeks and months. And the 15 in a row doesn't really count for much. Mm. Well, it does, because, you know, if you actually put a rational head on it, the perspective is you had a great season. But what you didn't do was produce that at the time that you really needed to. And the Crusaders, it doesn't matter that they lost to the Blues and they lost to the Chiefs. They lost to New South Wales, for goodness sake. But again, all of that's forgotten. Um, My point being with the the football um, about winning being everything is the... The prize at the end of both of those matches wasn't just the World Cup, it was about the money as well. $16 million? $16 million New Zealand dollars. So to qualify for the FIFA World Cup, you get um, $9 million US straight away. So that comes into the bank account within about 24 hours, 48 hours apparently. And then $1.5 million US is preparation money. So that means you can actually organise friendlies, you can do your training camps and stuff like that. Look, New Zealand football isn't a cash-rich sports organisation. And, and it's not like... Rugby and cricket, which have overriding, overarching international bodies that provide money. Um, it, it's it's not a sport that attracts the huge local sponsors. And so, it's you know, that money, well, absolutely invaluable. It's not like they're going to receive 16, 14, or, uh, 14 million, which would have been theirs, and then the rest prep money. It's not like they're going to get a check like that from anyone else this year, are they? No. Um, and, and also the sidebar of that, of course, is that the deal they have with the players is a 60-40 deal. So any prize money like that, New Zealand football itself gets 60%, the players get 40. So when you extrapolate it out and talk about the 14 million US, uh, sorry, New Zealand dollars, that works out roughly about $250,000 a player if they'd made it, which is about the base salary of an All Black every year. It goes up for the, how many games you play for the All Blacks, but that's a pretty nice cash payout and for those guys who aren't say Chris Wood who's earning you know really good money in the Premier League you know for a lot of those there's guys that play for the Phoenix there's you know guys who are you know in um, playing in, in other leagues around the world that's a lot of money well, that's the other side of it as well that's it's almost the exposure about a, that you uh, about a tenth of a deposit of a house in Auckland isn't it that 250,000 <laughs> <laughs> if that at the moment yeah, yeah. Um, the other side of it as well is the exposure that you miss out then on the World yeah. Cup as well isn't yeah. it because what last few World Cups ago Winston Reid and lands a deal at West Ham. Yeah. A, a lot more of the All Whites now play overseas, but that surely feeds into it as well. Well, Hamish, it's your shop window. Mm. You know, there's no bigger shop window in the world than playing these international tournaments and the Football World Cup. Uh, if you played the European Championships, we can't play that, of course, but um, if you played the Football World Cup, uh, the eyes of the world are on it. It's the biggest sporting event on the planet. And mm. so, you know, Winston Reid was playing for a, a Danish club. I won't even try to pronounce it. I don't, I mean, you know, if I was on, um, what is it, Wheel of Fortune, I'd buy a valve for that one. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> um, but, you know, that goal he scored against Slovakia and his performances from that point on, mm. um, yeah, that, that he got he got a contract virtually straight away and played a decade. So, you know, that's it's 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 a cruel way to lose, but the winning is isn't everything. It's the only thing. The reason I wrote that is because you look at the the difference between the Australian game and the New Zealand game, and just tactics and gamesmanship, and if you want to call it professionalism and everything else that went on. You know, as New Zealanders, I like to think that we have a innate sense of fairness and justice about most things, mm. and especially the way we play sport. You know, there's something about cheating at sport which just raises our ire through the roof, doesn't it? You know, as soon as you find out that Lance Armstrong's been on the juice the whole time, you, you know, people get angry about yeah. it. Um, you know, whether or not in 1995 we had our burgers poisoned, I don't know. But, you know, we were all sick for that. You know, the idea that another team will will do things that you that you wouldn't to mm. win. You know, it's like dirty pool in the pub, isn't it? If you, you know, you turn your back and your mate's moved his ball or something. It's all fair and love and war when you're having a couple of jars yeah. with your friends. But, you know, for, for the New Zealanders... And after speaking with Coach Danny Hay uh, for the All Whites, you know, I'm not wanting to be critical because I really love this team and I think what he's doing is amazing. But I just wonder whether we kind of lacked a little bit of that win at all costs kind of attitude. 
that Costa Rica brought. Mm. And for example, when I thought we had a perfectly good goal disallowed, and you probably thought, and I think most New Zealanders, I agree. yeah. 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 Um, well, the Costa Ricans were around that referee, and they and these were weak referees. These were club referees that should never have been in charge of that game. But you know, I think that the pressure of that forced them to go to the VAR. Mm. Um, you know, the, then all the play acting and diving and the rolling around the field, and you know, the Costa Barbarossa sending off, which was probably exaggerated. You know, do we want our players to play like that? Probably not. But in the end, we're not at the World Cup and they are. Yeah. And so because of that, we don't just miss out on the money and, and what the potential is for our players and things. Just in terms of even selling New Zealand as a country at that event, you know, it's like a, it's like a promotional tourist video. Like, mm. you know, as I said, the eyes of the world are on you. For Australia, though, hey, um, they absolutely did that. I mean, they substituted their goalkeeper late, and here's the guy that all the you know copped a lot of flack for it as well. Yeah, yeah you know those um, things they have outside the car yards, those big blow up guys who you know, they, <laughs> he looked like one of them, didn't he? Yeah. And then ripping the instructions off the other guy's water bottle and throwing those into the crowd. Again, it, was that the you know sort of football you know equivalent to the underarm? Probably, yeah. but it, again, distasteful for us. And I was looking at it thinking, so the All Blacks, you know, just put this situation: the All Blacks were. Two points ahead in the World Cup final. There's a 40-metre penalty. And so all our players are behind the goal line doing all that silly stuff. I mean, would we really want it? If the final whistle went and we put the guy off and he missed the penalty, we probably wouldn't care. Yeah. But, you know, it's just that at that level of professional sport, your margins are so small... Something that could be called gamesmanship. Of, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to bring Five into World Cups in a row for Australia. Well, now, and you can't it? deny that, can yeah. you? Yeah. And you know, and that game was terrible, Hamish. It was one of the worst games of football I've ever watched. No one will ever watch a replay. But as I said in the column, that's not the point. But it is the point because it doesn't matter how bad it was. The yeah, end result yeah. is all that actually counted. Martin, thanks very much for your time. Yeah, enjoyable.